they can teach, that they can heal, they can cast out demons, stuff that they've never done before. It's a watershed moment for them, and it's also scary, you know? Almost right off the bat, we get sent off. We're all paired up two by two and we'll go out to teach and to heal. Many people don't feel worthy to do that. We bring to life what in the Bible is a brief anecdote that he sent them out two by two. Mwah. That is a writer's delight. The fewer the details on something like that, the more fun for us. So we got to d imagine, okay, who's getting paired up with who? The easiest funny one is Big James and Little James. Hey, for real, come on. I can make it a thing. Humor disarms people. I think this season we're, we're, we're beginning to see what happens when Big James gets out of his comfort zone. And his comfort zone is very much being paired up with his brother. Poor James is left to the side because John is so excited to be with somebody other than his brother. John is paired up with Thomas. It kind of leaves James feeling a little bit jealous. I was really interested in exploring maybe the more fragile sides of Big James. He's actually been kind of sheltered if you think about it. I, I have a feeling that James and John are kind of like mummy and daddy's boys. Thomas is very rational and, and collected. John is a son of thunder, very fiery and, you know, quick to react. The people that are paired up are in a way kind of opposites. A tax collector and a person whose former job it was to murder tax collectors. So how are, how's that gonna go? Like who would have thought that, but it's like perfect. He's a tax collector. He's no more a tax collector than you are a zealot. We don't know about each other's past yet, and I think when we go off on our two-by-two two journey, it was it was great, because you, you can clearly see that we came back with a bond. Everyone develops a south spot, whether they admit it or not. With Matthew, he kind of gets in there. First of all, when I knew I was going to be, be paired up with Paris, I was so excited. I love Paris and, and what he does with his character. The story, I think, is so interesting. Besides the obvious conflict of the zealot and the tax collector. Z goes in because he's almost, he's pulled into it. It's exciting. Matthew analyzes the situation. It's not comfortable for him and it's scary and all that. And so the combination of the two characters, I think they really teach each other. Kind of shows how even we can work together with people that we don't get along with or we don't see eye to eye with. Allah's bringing so much to Simon Z and it's been wonderful getting to see him work and getting to actually now work with him in scenes. Could, could you just repeat that one more time? I think what we're really excited to see is the disciples taking all that they've learned up to that point and then applying it, that they can teach, that they can heal, that they can cast out demons, stuff that they've never done before. They've only seen him do it. It's a watershed moment for them, and it's also scary, you know? When Judas hears Jesus tell them to go out by two and he's paired with Simon, I think he's genuinely terrified. But then his ambition takes over and he sees this as a chance to prove himself. It's a really interesting pairing because historically we know both of them denied Christ in some way. We can prepare for something, but when it comes to the time and the moment to actually do it, tons of doubt creeps in. And you, you start thinking, am I worthy of this? Am I, am I able to do this kind of thing? And although Thaddeus has those feelings, I think he's more on the side of like, let's trust this. He wouldn't send us out. Uh, if he didn't think we were ready. I think Nathaniel more doubting and Thaddeus more kind of like we can, we can make this work. It's a good mesh. Nathaniel has a line where he says he's terrified right before going out and I think he means it. We were gonna film one of my scenes and an actor came down with COVID so he couldn't do the scene and they couldn't move it. So we had to get that scene done. And so they rewrote it and they put Giovanni into the scene. The night before, we're in our hotel rooms going over the scene and he learned it and he was perfect and no one even knew. Each disciple has a unique experience, both some positive, some negative. Philip and I, we get thrown out. <laughs> Preaching in the area has caused almost an uprising. So then we have to wrestle with, in Philip's mind, failure and in my mind, just just really trying to have my faith in the process and in Jesus, knowing that we were doing what we should have done. But it's very hard to keep that faith when things are going very badly there. The one disciple that Philip knows coming in is Andrew. The one person I knew coming in was Noah. He was in a short film a couple of weeks before we started shooting. I went to the screening and the first person I see is Noah James. And for the first time ever, I hear, dude, what's up, man? 
in, bro, you're gonna be in the show, let's go. And he's just like right off the bat, so uh, welcoming and warm. Zero ego in that guy, and the cast just wouldn't be the same without him. There's like nobody like Noah James. Like he's like the only person who's like that. You could see the way that people responded in that moment where it was a rap on Noah James, how much he means to everybody. Him and I definitely have a special bond. That's really what I'm excited about people seeing is how we as disciples really grow into being the apostles.